My name is Bob Power. People pay me money to help them make records. A producer is either and or. A really good musician, someone who's not a musician at all but has good instincts, someone who has neither of those things but knows how to navigate through a record label, someone who's a great engineer, someone who doesn't know a fader from a hole in the wall, someone who has a lot of money, someone who has a megalomaniacal um, personality. When I moved back to New York, I came back and I thought, still had uh, notions of being a player. So, came back here with some money in my pocket, a couple of Emmy nominations. I thought I was, you know, gonna kill the world. In a year and a half, I was playing Mafia Weddings in Flatbush for $90. And then taking the subway home in my tuxedo, and that's not an exaggeration. I worked for a guy named Jim Serpico. I swear to God, Mr. 5x5 five five with a little stiletto mustache, he used to walk around with a suitcase full of cash and a gun. Anyway, I was working overnight at a studio called Calliope, and people who know hip hop know about it. It was a real seminal hip hop studio uh, in the mid 80s. And the owner would always fall asleep at the console. It would be like six o'clock, and I remember the, the thing faced east, and the sun would like come up in her eyes, and he'd be sleeping. So I'd kind of finish things off myself. One day he says to me, he said, well listen, Bob Coulter, who was engineering for me, uh, is going away for a couple weeks. Do you want to fill in? And then a lot of people came through that studio, and particularly my association with De La Soul and Tribe Called Quest was very important. Tribe wanted to mix their first record up at Battery, which is a really nice studio, SSL. So I went up there, and now it's now. You know, I asked a lot of questions. My philosophy is that it's really about the artist and the music and not about me. I am a facilitator, I'm supposed to help people. And ideally, after working with me, maybe those people won't need me anymore. And that's a good thing. Here we go. This, this is memorabilia. Um, I produced On and On with Erica Badu for her first single. This is her lyric sheet. So, you know, I'm proud of my association with a lot of the great artists that I've worked with, uh, Tribe, D'Angelo, Erica Badu, Ozo Motley, Citizen Cope, uh, a lot of others that I'm probably leaving out. I had to think a few years ago. I said, geez, you do all these things and you do it all different ways. What do you really like to do? And I realized I like to make great music with great people. Technology marching on has impacted the way music's made from one end to the other. Number one, because you can make a record in your living room. We'll go back to the top again. Buy some good gear and a computer and the right software. If you're careful, you can make a really good record. Number two, it has allowed everybody to do that. These are all racks of vintage recording gear. Um, worth a lot of money. I pull them out maybe once a year now, but this is my retirement. They're all need modules. In the 50s, if you wanted to make a record, you had to hire an expensive studio, uh, an engineer, an arranger, expensive musicians. They'd come down, lay down the charts, the guy would mic the instruments in the same way that they did every time, record it, and this was this huge thing. This is the new way to do things where you don't have a huge room and you just kind of everybody stands in the same room and makes the record. Technology has allowed people to make music in very idiosyncratic ways which we've discovered in hindsight is that like that's the real cool stuff. I usually leave in fact I have this microphone which isn't connect, connected here and I'll just go in headphones real fast and do a little percussion track. Uh, I'm sort of known for being Mr. Clean and picky with audio, but I've changed a lot. You know, life in the modern age is not about perfect and shiny, so. We all know that Macintosh is really the media computer of choice, the production computer of choice. I really think that has to do with a couple of things. Number one, 
Max were always a little more, I don't know if it's left brain or right brain, but it's the creative side, not the analytical. Is it right? I don't know. There's been a great shakeout over the years. For one set of years, everyone will say, oh, digital performer is the one of choice, you know. Now, now it's logic. I've been using it since it wasn't even called Logic. It was called Creator or Notator, and I ran it on an Atari computer, a game computer. Logic is an extremely full-featured program. You pay 500 bucks, you get the recorder, you get the playback, you get the plugins, the EQs, the compressors. You get all these virtual instruments, and you don't need a bank of synthesizers anymore. Amazing example of rede redesigning the doorknob makes going through the door a completely different experience. One of the great things about the new Logic is everything is available from the main arrange page. Everything else you may need at one point or another will attach to that window. You don't have to go completely to another window and then back into the first one. And it seems like a little thing, but when you use this stuff 16 hours a day, it's huge. Technology marches on, and I feel blessed that I have a natural proclivity towards technology. You know, production and mixing and even being a sideman, they're all part of helping people along their way musically. You must be passionate about it. And then if you do that and if you help people, good things will happen to you.